And so joining us on this week's show, I'm extremely honored and excited to present a real legend and a pioneer in the game. We got Los Angeles Rams great, Eddie Medor. Eddie, how are you? Oh, doing fine, Ed. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm uh, really excited to be able to get you on the phone here, Ed. How's things treating you down there in Virginia? Well, it's going going pretty good, I guess. We've um, um, I just sold my business uh, a couple of months ago, and I'm retired now, so it's I'm going to do a little bit of traveling and and things of that sort. So uh, hopefully, my wife won't get tired of me being in the house around here all the time. <laughs> oh, that that that's great! So you're just living the dream, Ed. Where, where are you where are you looking to travel? You got any trips set up? Oh no, not really. We just got grandkids and great grandkids and uh, and kids all over the United States, just about. And uh, so, but I want to. I've got a like a grandson that's a senior in high school down in Arkansas that is a real fine little football player, and uh, uh, I got to go see him at homecoming down there uh, uh, a couple of three weeks ago. And, and uh, he's a he's a pretty doggone good little football player too. Oh, that's amazing! So, and what, what position does he play? Uh, he's a flanker, pass receiver. He uh, he uh, started out a quarterback in junior high and everything, but uh, he they moved him out as a flanker this year, and he had uh, he had a good a good season. In fact, uh, their team uh, won the state championship. Uh, last weekend, so there, that's uh, a, a good thing, I guess. For, since I went to the same high school back in in the fifties, you know, uh, we didn't have near the football team that they had. I'll tell you for sure. Oh wow, that, that's amazing! Following in Grandpa's footsteps, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's uh, he's. Uh, Trying to decide on what college he wants to go to, and and uh, so he's got a couple of offers and so forth. So we we hopefully hopefully he'll uh, pursue one of them. Oh, absolutely! That, that's amazing. And, and you know, us here at the Big Star Show, we'll definitely be be rooting for him. Now, Ed, you you had some success in high school as an athlete as well. I I saw you were a a three sports star. Can you tell me a little bit about your, your days in high school as an athlete? Well, we I was we were born I was born and raised out in Texas, and uh, we moved to Arkansas when I was in, a sophomore in high school. And um, uh, of course, I, we my first year as a as a sophomore, I didn't um, I didn't get to play because of the, the situation moving there. Uh, from one school to another, I guess there's some kind of a uh, program that you can't uh, participate in sports for 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 that year that you move there. So but anyway, uh, uh, my junior year, I uh, got I broke my hip in spring and in practice and, uh, before school started, and so I didn't get to play football then. And uh, but I did. Uh, was able to run track later on that year, and and uh, and then when I was a senior, I, I uh, ran track and uh, played basketball and and football. I really wanted to, I really wanted to play football and go to Texas A&M, but uh, I went down and, and Bear Bryant was coaching down there at that time and. And they looked at me and they said, "Man, you can't play in the Southwest Conference. You're too little for that." Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I came back and I, I thought, "Well, I'll try to see what uh, University of Tulsa will say." So I went up there and and they said basically the same thing. So, but anyway, it all worked out. Uh, my high school coach was had was a uh, assistant coach at the, at Arkansas Tech where I went to college and uh, they offered me a full scholarship to, to play football at Tech and uh, Arkansas Tech and uh, so 
So I took them up on it, and really, at this point, I'm kind of glad that I did because it was a small school, and it was like uh, kind of like a high school, I guess you'd say, uh, where you got to know, you know, almost everybody in school. And uh, so that's what started me, and I played four years at, at Arkansas Tech, and then was fortunate enough to get uh, drafted by the Rams uh, that year in 1959, and um, that's that's the story of my 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 early life story right there. <laughs> that, that, that's amazing. Yeah, you really uh, overcame a lot of adversity. That's amazing to break your hip as a high school kid. That must have been devastating to to get injured and not be able to participate in sports, which I know you uh, direly wanted to do, huh? Yeah, it wasn't any fun. It, uh, I, it was just a uh, kind of a strange thing that happened to me. It, uh, I was running out for a, for a pass, and and uh, actually, what happened was that the, my leg muscle, my muscle, goes up the femur into the hip. I pulled it where the where the muscle was attached to the hip bone. It actually pulled a I pulled a piece of my hip. <laughs> Out about the size of a fifty cent piece, or the and uh, I couldn't move my leg. That's for sure at that point. Oh no! But well, Eddie, you you played football in a day. I was doing some research on your your college days. You played in the Iron Man football days. Uh, I saw that you pretty much never left the field in in college. Is that right? You played running back, defensive back, and also return man. Mm, yes, yeah, sir. Sure did. It was a uh, sixty minutes, you know, just about full full fledged, and you know, about the only time you get got any rest was, uh, you know, at halftime or whatever. That's <laughs> the day of the tough guys, huh? Yeah, well, I guess so. Either that a crazy one too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I guess you got to be a little crazy to uh, succeed in such a uh, rough game like football, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it was a great life. I enjoyed every minute of it, and and uh, just uh, hated uh, to retire from it when I did. But uh, it was to the point that I uh, wasn't physically able to to continue to do what I uh, was supposed to do. Oh, Eddie, you you had a remarkable career, and your list of achievements, I mean, it just goes on and on. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the NFL draft was like back back then? I mean, obviously now it's a, a huge skeptical, and, um, you know, it's a big thing on TV, and it's a multiple-day thing. But what was it like back back uh, in 1959 when, when you were drafted? Well, um, it's, uh, it was – and of course, you know, me being from a small school, uh, it was really something at that point. Uh, I think, and, and at that time, there was twelve teams in football, and uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, get to play in a in what was called at that time the Optimus Bowl game out in uh, Arizona. Uh, it was a game that. Uh, um, pitted the uh, uh, small school All Americans against the major college All Americans, and uh, we just almost beat those boys. But wow, uh, we didn't we didn't quite quite do it. But anyway, um, so uh, there was a, a Ram Scout that was out there, and of course, I guess there were scouts from all, a lot of the different uh, uh, NFL teams at that time. Eddie Cofill was his name, and uh, uh, he, I, in that particular game, I played offense and defense also, and, uh, and he um, talked to me after the game and asked me if I might be interested in playing professional football, and I said, well, Sure, I guess so. I hadn't, hadn't really thought about it because uh, I had prepared myself during college. Uh, I went through the ROTC program at Tech and uh, and had planned on uh, the military as a career. And 
So, but anyway, they if they a couple of weeks later, well, they uh, had the draft, and of course, I didn't, I wasn't following it or anything, and and they uh, had drafted me in the seventh round, and uh, I, I, Eddie Cotel called me and told me about it. And, I said, well, fantastic. And now I've got to determine what I'm going to do with the military because I went through four years of college in, in ROTC and uh, and uh, had a regular Army commission. And uh, so uh, I had to make a decision at that point. And uh, I thought, well... My entry date into the military wasn't until after football season would have been my rookie year. And so I would just go to Los Angeles and see if I can make that ball club. And if I can, I'll see what I can do about the military. So I did. And, and uh, was fortunate enough to make the, make the team. And, and um, so now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do. So I... Uh, and that, that was between the Korean conflict and Vietnam, so uh, uh, there wasn't a real big. Didn't really need the uh, military officers like they would have had, had it been, you know, in a uh, some kind of a conflict. But uh, so, but anyway, I I uh, called the uh, Fourth Army headquarters and and. Uh, and I had my president of my college uh, to talk to Senator Fulbright back at that time, and so I got I got uh, uh, from a three-year obligation down to a six-month obligation. Oh wow! And I could, and I could take it between uh, during the off season, you know. So that's how that's how all that worked out, and and. From that point on, it's been it's been uh, the ram's horn on my helmet all the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good fit for you. So, so you literally you, you played football during the season, and then when the season ended, you went and you you reported to uh, the military, huh? Yes, sir. I, I did. As soon as the season was over, I went straight to Fort Benning, Georgia, and went through the officer's basic course down there, and uh, finished that, and came back. They sent me back to California, uh, uh, for, and I was assigned to a basic training unit. And was, I was an instructor in, in uh, a lot of the courses that they had for those uh, young military people. Wow! So they they kept you in the off season. They they kept you in tip top shape, huh? Yeah, they yeah, they did. They kept me, but I, I didn't have to. Uh, I didn't have to uh, serve anymore for some reason. I, I like I said, the, the, the obligations wasn't really tough at that point. Um, after the six months of uh, duty was up, up the uh, after my rookie year, then I went back and and played. Uh, you know, the second year and and. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm, you know, they're going to put me in a reserve unit and all that kind of stuff, and and uh, so I called when I got back to to uh, all after after the second season, I called a, a reserve unit and talked to the one of the well, the, the commander in the, in that reserve unit, and uh, uh, I said, you know, it, really I can't make the meetings on. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of meetings during football season, and he says, "Well, what do you do?" And I told him that I played with the Rams, and he says, "We don't need people like you in my in our organization." Oh, I said, no. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out for the best, huh? Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> it sure did. Eddie, what was it like? Uh, back in those days, being a professional athlete in the city of Los Angeles. Well, it was. I I suppose it was. Uh, it was a it was a good life. Uh, uh, I did a lot of uh, 
speaking engagements, you know, at high schools and uh, and uh, different organizations and so forth. That, uh, in fact, I would I was doing somewhere around fifty to sixty of those things a year. And then, well, uh, and I just uh, I have a lot of friends from. Uh, the, that situation uh, back in California, and um, it's just it, it was just gr- it was just great. I just I just enjoyed every bit of it. I guess the, I guess you rubbed elbows with a lot of celebrities back then, huh? Oh, not really. I uh, saw you know some uh, Bob Hope was. Uh, uh, part owner in the Rams when I first went out there. And um uh, I I guess I I saw a few and but not really a whole lot. I gotcha. had a couple of banquets and so forth with uh, uh, uh different people, you know, that uh, they would have not only me but uh, someone else uh, from different organizations and different uh, uh, jobs and whatever. That's, that's, that's exciting. I mean, I, I love the city of L.A., so I couldn't imagine uh, being able to play pro football there. John, I want to I backtrack a little. You, you, you talked to us a little bit about the Optimistic Bowl, which I read a little mm-hmm. bit about. It seemed exciting. It said that you played with uh, John Madden and John Wooten in that game. Yeah, sure did. Wow. Yeah. They, those boys were on the big schools. Oh boy, and, yeah, yeah. John Madden and and John Wooden and oh gosh, uh, there's there's one or two others I guess that were that that played professional football. I can't remember now exactly who all they were, but uh, that was a that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I I, I guess looking back, that's that's got to be pretty amazing when you think about all your accomplishments and all the great things you did and all the just the amazing people that you were. You were amongst, and you know, you were obviously amazing yourself. Um, it seems, you know, looking, doing a little research on you, it seems that you, you're just a true leader. I mean, you were a, a captain in high school, if I'm not mistaken. You were a co-captain in college. You were a captain in the pros. L- looking back, what, what do you consider your biggest achievement? What's the thing you're most proud of looking back? No, gosh, yeah, that's kind of a hard question. Uh, I mean, I know you were. I, I saw that you were. Um, I guess. I guess you know. Probably one of the most amazing things in my life has been uh, married to my wife, and and having our kids. That's amazing. And it's funny that you you mentioned that, Eddie, because you you really led me right to to a question that I have circled that I wanted to ask you. I'm actually a new father myself. I have a young daughter, and. Uh, oh. It's an amazing, it's an amazing feeling that that, that cannot be uh, compared to any. And I see, you know, some of your amazing accomplishments. You know, '60s All Decade Team. You know, your high school Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, all types of, of of amazing stuff. You were Arkansas Amateur Athlete of the Year. But I saw that you won an award in the NFL as uh, Father of the Year. Yeah, they had a. Uh... Back then, they they had I don't know if they still have it or not, but uh, uh, that was quite amazing. I had um, my oldest son has cerebral palsy and he's handicapped, and uh, and I did a lot of work uh, for handicapped kids when I was living in Los Angeles, and uh, and then we had we have. Uh, uh, I have a daughter with uh, and two other sons, and then uh, we just lost uh, a daughter two years ago from a, a brain tumor. No, oh, I'm uh, so sorry to hear that, Ed. And then, but I do have another daughter in um, in Texas, lives in Texas, and and uh, she's a horse girl, and and. Uh, it's just been, uh, we're just, and that's why, you know, that I've, uh, 
I want to do some traveling to see I see all those kids so that I, you know, that uh, I don't miss a lot of their growing up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, no, nothing can replace quality time with loved ones. Uh, I couldn't agree yeah, more with you there, Ed. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. My wife just said, we've even got grandkids in Alaska. Wow, Alaska, huh? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been to Alaska? No, I haven't, but I'm gonna try to make it. <laughs> it's on your list. Wow, so you really you really got the whole United States of America covered, huh? Yeah, well, really? <laughs> yeah, most of most of them are in. Uh, well, I have them in, have kids in uh, Arkansas, Texas, Kansas, uh, and Alaska. Wow. But you, I guess you, you you got some busy days of traveling ahead. That's exciting stuff. Thank you, really? I'm going to get me one of those little cars that get about eighty, about 50 miles a gallon. There you go. <laughs> From what they're saying. Up the highway. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. I didn't That's mean amazing. to cut you off while ago. I just happened to think of all those kids. And oh, no, home. absolutely. Uh, hey, uh, you have something to say? I want to hear it. I, I No problem at all. Eddie, tell, you were uh, you were a captain of the L.A. Rams, so you were a leader of the fearsome foursome. Can you tell me a little bit about playing with those guys? Well, they were pretty they were pretty doggone good football players. I'll tell you, uh, it, uh, we had in the latter part of my career, we had some really fine football, a really fine football team. Uh, and as far as the fearsome foursome is concerned, uh, the original fearsome foursome was uh, Lamar Lundy, uh, Deacon Jones, Merle Nelson, and Rosie Greer. And Rosie got tore Achilles tendon, um, so that put him out of football. Uh, he was, uh, and and of course at that point we uh, traded. The Rams traded and got uh, Roger Brown uh, from the Detroit Lions. And, uh, but those four people were amazing, I'll tell you. And, of course, we had some pretty doggone good linebackers, too, with Jack Pardee and Maxie Bond and Myron Patios. Um, they were uh, about as good as, as any threesome and in the in the, the league at that time. How, how close were you guys? How, how close of a relationship did, did you guys on that defense have? Well, I think it was. We had a lot of a lot of closeness. Um, we seemed to we did things together uh, as a team. You know, after a ball game and everything, we'd all. The whole team, offense and defense, would uh, go out to dinner or whatever, and and um, there was just a lot of camaraderie um, in in uh, in our group of people. And I, I'm not sure that there's that much going on nowadays. Uh, maybe there is, or maybe there's not. I don't know. But uh, uh, it was it was just a real good situation we had, and especially when uh, George Allen took over as head coach, and uh, uh, he just, uh, George was a, a super, super coach. I, I think he was probably the, uh, one of the best there ever was, and uh, he, all he thought about was football. He uh, he's 120% football coach and <laughs> if you walked into the training area um and he happened to be there um uh, you could say good morning coach and he'd say boy you gotta watch that mike ditka he's tough and you're gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to really <laughs> concentrate on him you know because <laughs> that's what that's what he felt like was everything had to do with football I guess that's the kind of guy you want leading your football team, huh? I think so. Uh, yeah, that yeah, that's he was just a super, super individual. 
Uh, that's, he, he just uh, and he was a he was a tremendous student of uh, of football, and he taught us an awful lot. That's amazing. That, that's incredible. And what an amazing defense to be a part of. And you were certainly a key cog to that to that team. I'm looking over some stats, and you still actually hold some records today. How do you feel about that? You still, to this day, you hold the I believe the interception record for the Rams, right? The interception and blocked kicks, I believe, you still are the the record holder of. Yeah, well, uh, that's because of, that's because we had a defensive line in front of us that uh, put the pressure on the quarterback. <laughs> I can thank them. I guess a great I'm pass rush is the DB's best friend, huh? Uh, you better believe it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen. Uh, Deacon Jones, for example, uh, uh, I've seen him time and time again. If uh, a sweep uh, was going the opposite direction, I've seen him come off that line of scrimmage and catch, catch the ball for uh, the, the running back before he ever got to the line of scrimmage. It's just unbelievable, the speed of that man. And unfortunately, there's... Um, I guess but the only ones left is Rosie Greer is still alive and uh, and um uh, uh yeah Deacon's gone and Lamar Lundy's gone and, and Merlin Olson, all three of them. True 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 yeah. legends of the game right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're just uh, they were super. I tell you, I can't, I can't say enough about them. It's just they just not, they were just unbelievable. That's all. Wow, uh, that's amazing. That, that's that's some some really cool stories right there. Uh, Eddie, how, how did you feel about the the Rams moving back to LA this season? I was really glad for them for, the, for them to uh, move back. Uh, uh, I think they got a, a rebuilding program to go, and, and I think that uh, I was just reading. Um, Stuff today on the on my telephone. Uh, uh, the coaches Jeff Fisher has been fired, and uh, you know that he 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 signed a two year. They gave him a two year um, contract about a month ago, I believe it was something like that. Yeah, yeah, they they just gave him an extension. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and, and they uh, they fired him. I guess it was well after the last ball game, which was was Sunday. Or they fired him yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I just saw that actually. Interesting that they would re-sign him and then fire him only a couple of weeks later. Huh? Yeah, that's uh, that's. Uh, I tell you, they were getting a lot of pressure from from the Ram organization, the Ram fans in L.A. Uh, I know they were getting a lot of a lot of flack from them because I get it, I get it on my. Uh, Facebook and everything on on my telephone. You, anyway. you, you gotta love these smartphones, huh? The technology is pretty yeah, unbelievable. Really. Yeah, and I don't know how to work half of them. <laughs> I, have to, I have to get get my wife to say, hey, you you punch the right button for me." <laughs> oh, that's funny. Eddie, did you have any? Uh, what was when you were playing your playing days? What was like your pregame meal? Did you have a pregame meal or pregame music that you listened to, or you ate to get you fired up and, and ready for a game? Oh, we had pregame meals. Uh, well, it was, I've forgotten now, but it was so many hours prior to a ball game, and uh, and there was nothing really. I don't know. It was a protein type meal or something like that, I guess. How about music? Did you have any songs or any anything you listened to that got you fired up and ready to go? No, George Allen got George Allen had his voice going, <laughs> getting us fired up. <laughs> nice. I guess you you didn't you didn't need any uh, any extra motivation. You had plenty from coaching. No, I see I see these guys now with these headphones all you know, they get off the airplane and all that kind of stuff, and they go on the bus to the stadium or whatever and they got their I guess they're listening to to their music. I don't know. Yeah, it's funny because you're you're absolutely right now. You talk to guys today and every it's that's why I asked that question actually because a lot of the guys you talk to today they have 
specific artist or song they like to listen to before the game. So I thought yeah. it'd be interesting to ask you that. Yeah, no, we we didn't. Well, of course, we didn't have all the the modern equipment that <laughs> that they have now, I guess. But right, right, a different era. How about superstitions, yeah. Ed? Did you have any superstitions? Well, yeah, I guess uh, I don't know that I had any, but uh, there was uh, on the day of the game or something like that. They, they, uh, you do basically the same thing that you you do last game or whatever, you know, and, and it used to be a, a superstition type thing. Um, and you and you might want to uh, put the tape around your uh, hold your uh, socks up uh, the same way every time, you know. <laughs> right, right. Things, things of that nature. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I because I know uh, superstition plays a large role in sports. A lot of guys have some interesting uh, superstitions. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. Well, Ed, this is this is great. I really appreciate you taking the time. What uh, what are you uh, what have you been doing with yourself lately to, to keep busy? What are, what are some of your hobbies that you do now? Well, uh, like I say, I just I'm just freshly retired. Uh, I sold my business uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, what I was doing prior to that, uh, I, we manufactured fine gold jewelry, uh, equestrian jewelry. Uh, in other words, uh, like horseshoes, uh, horseshoe rings, and and all kinds of uh, different things that had to do with horses, and uh, sold primarily to uh, people who owned horses. And uh, we traveled all over the United States uh, selling horse jewelry. Wow. And uh, if you get a chance, look up, uh, uh, if you have access to the Internet and everything, look up the gorgeous horse, and you'll see the jewelry that we make. Absolutely. And I'll certainly promote that. The gorgeous horse. Sounds interesting. The, the gorgeous horse, yeah. Nice. Fair enough. That, that's amazing. That, that, that's exciting stuff. Well, Ed, uh, I really appreciate it. I can't thank you enough for, for coming on. It's a true honor. and. Um, the last thing I want to I want to close out with is how do you feel about what's going on with the Hall of Fame? Do you feel that you will get in? Because I believe that you deserve to be in. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, oh, it would be it would be great. Uh, uh, was honor, honored uh, a couple of three months ago with uh, Mike Ditka uh, uh, puts on a. Uh, Hall of Fame uh, type thing, and uh, uh, you might look him up too on uh, the internet because it, it was a. It's a. Uh, I guess I, I guess it's for guys that that uh, hadn't made the NFL Hall of Fame. So, but it was quite an honor for me. We were gonna, I received the award out in Las Vegas. Uh, it's been a couple of months ago. And uh, had a lot of fun. Got to see a lot of the old players, ball players that I played against. And old Jim Taylor, the one I was out there, and, and uh, oh, just uh, several guys. Mean Joe Green, and guys, you know, that played back when I played. We just we had a really good time. Oh, yeah, I could imagine. That sounds sounds amazing. And uh, I know a lot of your a lot of your peers, uh, from what I've read, uh, also support the the idea that you certainly were a Hall of Famer. I just read a, a quote from Tommy McDonald who said that you played like a Hall of Famer. Wow. Uh, oh, Tommy. He, he was a sight. That boy was was a fine ball player. Well, Eddie, I want to yeah. thank you again for uh, taking the time out of your day to, to, to join us on the show. and uh, I want to wish you the best of luck in uh, whatever endeavors you do in your retired days, and I want to uh, they have a great time traveling the country and visiting those grandkids. Uh, thank you very much, Ed. It's a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, my wife just told me that uh, that Hall of Fame deal that Mike Ditka puts on is uh, gridiron greats. Gridiron greats. Okay, I'll definitely have to check that out.
Yes. Okay. Ed, well, Eddie, if you're, if you're ever up in the New Jersey area, I would love for you to and your wife to come out with me and my lady for, for a dinner. I would love to I'd be honored to take you guys out. Well, thank you very much. We just might do that. Okay. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to okay. me. Okay. Eddie right. Metter, all-time Los Angeles Rams great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye.